And actually, I'll take over from Kaylee. Um, what we're going to be talking about today is, is really getting everybody on the same page with what the steering committee has been doing in the background to set up the, the MEP 2040 challenge. And in, in a lot of ways, we're following some of the uh, steps that have, have gone before us, especially the AIA and Architecture 2030 Challenge that really set the bar for operational carbon. And, and as many of you know, and many of you participate uh, with your architectural clients in uh, the efforts to get to net zero uh, carbon by 2030 uh, on the operational side. So the top part of this graph actually is showing uh, the architecture AIA 2030 uh, uh, goal set with the idea that the darker orange bar, which represents that operational carbon, going to zero by 2030. And then our good friends in the structural community really got involved in uh, getting into the game in, in the part of the building process that they have really got the most leverage and that's in the embodied carbon. And, um, you know, structural engineers aren't known for their aggressive uh, outside the box thinking. So they actually stretched out to 2050. We're, we're hoping we can uh, convince them to compress that a little bit, but they're trying to get down to embodied carbon uh, net zero by 2050. Uh, in both the AIA and the Structural Engineers Challenge, there's actually a, an opportunity for renewable energy to offset the, the carbon. So you can see the lighter orange bars and the lighter blue bars representing that offset. Um, the, the white bars above are essentially efficiency improvements. That's where we're lowering the carbon across the board just by making better buildings and making better choices uh, in the materials that we select. We came along in the MEP 2040 challenge really looking to echo what's happening with our friends in Architecture 2030 to get our operational carbon uh, down to zero by 2030, and then our embodied carbon by 2040. So once again, you can see the dark green bars representing the embodied carbon associated with MEP systems and materials going down to net zero by 2040, and then the lighter green bars representing uh, the renewable energy offsets to get that down to the net zero with the white bar above being the result of efficiency improvements and, and better choices. So this is the, the, the family right now of our signatories. We welcome uh, the folks who have joined us today who haven't signed on yet, who are uh, wanting to find out more about the challenge to get more information and, and hopefully convince their firms to join us in the challenge. The signatories are, are the folks that are actually making the, the commitment to follow the four main pillars of the challenge, while our supporters represent uh, the folks who are really interested in helping move us along in, in that pathway. And this includes our architectural clients, our owner clients, um, our, our support folks, the people who provide our software, uh, manufacturers, contractors, everyone else who's really interested in seeing the, the MEP 2040 challenge succeed are, are able to join us as supporters. And, and we urge the, the folks in the supporter community to also join us in our working groups as we work through figuring out how to get this done. Um, but the signatories are, are really the folks that have signed on to, to make each of the four pillars of the challenge uh, a reality. 
So the, the four pillars are, are really one of them. The last one that's in this list is what we're doing today. It's, it's as Andrew talked about, forming this community of folks who are wanting to help one another get to the finish line, to be successful in what is hopefully an effort uh, to turn the tide on climate change, especially the things that we as MEP design professionals have the ability to move that needle. So every quarter, we're going to be bringing this, this group back together and, and hopefully having a very open exchange about tools, case studies, moments of success, even relating lessons learned from hopefully not too great of failures. But we took a, a real um, guidance from our friends at, at Architecture 2030 and the AIA 2030 commitment in saying, we need to establish a plan, each of our firms, to get that operational and body carbon down to net zero by our target dates. Um, we also, we want to we want to report on this. We want to gather data on our uh, on our projects. You know, if you're not keeping score, you're not really in the game. So this is a way for us to to track how we're doing. You know, you can't manage what you don't measure. Measure our progress toward these goals. At this point, this reporting is all meant for the purposes of the signatory firm itself. We're not planning on sharing this data outside the network or even outside the firm uh, that, that signs onto it, unless they're so inclined to do so. This is really a, a commitment to keep score, if you will. The second is acknowledging the real uh, impact that refrigerants have. And, uh, from a global warming uh, perspective, they have many, many refrigerants have many times the, the global warming impact that a, a pound of CO2 does, sometimes many thousands of times. So we're asking the signatories to really get involved in being advocates for finding and implementing lower GWP refrigerants. And then finally, once again, going back to one of the things that Andrew talked about is gathering data on what's the embodied carbon in the stuff that goes into our MEP systems. So we don't want this to be the, the only thing that helps us make decisions about uh, reducing the embodied carbon uh, in MEP systems, but it's a piece of data that we really don't have very much information on right now. So this is, is once again, an advocacy position to reach into the community and start the conversation about getting this information out for the community to have. 